so taking a heart rate when you are doing this, you need to do this on the radial artery. So remember that your hand has two arteries that supply blood flow to it. You have the ulna, uh, the ulnar artery, which is on the side where the ulna is, and then the radial, which is on the side of the radial bone. So your radial artery, when you are finding this, can you hold your arm up for me? Okay, when you are finding this, I want you to look at the thumb. It's always on the side of the thumb, okay? Right underneath where this joint occurs, you're gonna feel this tendon, this nice, like this rope here, okay? That's the tendon, and just inside of that, it gets soft, okay? And when you push down on that, you should feel the radial artery, okay? So, you can have the patient put their palm up and then you can place your fingers. You will want to be using on your hand these two fingers or even three fingers to feel the pulse. You never want to use your thumb because your thumbs actually have a pulsation of their own. You may be counting your heart rate instead of the patient's. So using two to three fingers, never just one, but two or three fingers helps us to have a better sensation and make sure that we are accurately feeling their pulse and not our own. So. We take that finger and it covers more territory in case there's any issues with finding the artery. And just underneath that, I can feel that radial artery nicely. Now what I want you to do is find your own radial artery. And as you find your own radial artery, I want you to push down really, really hard. So once you feel it, okay, get a nice pulse, I want you to push down on it. And as you push down on it, you should feel nothing. That's called obliterating the pulse. When you push too hard, on, when you're trying to get a patient's pulse and you push too hard, you're not gonna be able to feel it. Now I want you to take that pulse in your arm and feel it, and you're like, yep, there it is, it's, it's back, I feel it great. And then I want you to slowly, lightly, lightly, just keep releasing pressure, and then you can't feel it again either, okay? So right in the middle is what you're going for, and a lot of students will say, I can't feel it, and when it comes down to it, a lot of it has to do with pressure. So as we're feeling for the patient, the good news is, is that anatomically, all of our arteries are in the same spot, okay? So we are, we should be able to feel it. We know our landmarks, so we know we're gonna be able to feel it. So if you can't feel it, push down a little bit more firmly. If you can't feel it, maybe lighten up a little bit to change it until that throbbing sensation, that pulsation becomes firm, okay? Because you should have a, what we call a two plus, or a brisk pulse, um, a two plus pulse here, okay? So as you're feeling this, you're gonna use your watch, okay? And as long as, the first thing you're gonna do is when you feel this pulse is you're determining it, does it have a rhythm to it and is it steady? And if it's got a steady rhythm to it, there's no gaps, there's no irregularity, it is a regular steady beat. You've now assessed that there's a regular pulsation, which means that if you count for 30 seconds and multiply it by two, you're going to get an accurate blood or an accurate heart rate because it is in fact a regular pulsation. If you have a patient that has an irregular uh, beat, so you're feeling it and then maybe it skips a beat or it starts beating really fast and then it slows back down and then it beats fast again and slows down, that's what we call an irregular pulse. And if they do have an irregular pulse, there's, there's no rhythm to it, um, you want to count for a full 60 seconds. So when you see a heart rate that's being reported, it's how many beats per minute, okay? So a full 60 seconds will give us an accurate reading of an irregular pulse. Again, can't multiply that by two because it's irregular. We're not really sure how many beats it's going, that's gonna happen in that 30 seconds or in that full minute, okay? But he has a nice steady heart rate, or a nice steady pulsation. So I will take this and I'm going to count for 30 seconds, okay? And as I count for the 30 seconds, um, and once the 30 seconds elapses, then I would say, okay, it was 30 beats per minute. Well, no, not really, it's 30 beats per 30 seconds. So you remember that you always have to multiply that number by two. So his pulsation, his pulse would be 60 beats per minute, okay? So that's the trick if you're gonna multiply it. Now, here's the thing is that there are some um, uh, places and in, in, in maybe you've been taught to count for 15 seconds and multiply it by four. Two things with that. Number one, multiplying by four, way harder than multiplying by two, so make it easy on yourself. But number two is that in 15 seconds, you might miss an irregularity if you haven't fully assessed that pulsation. 30 seconds is gonna give you a good quality number to make sure that you're reporting an accurate heart rate, okay? So again, make sure that you are checking your heart rate 
Um, here at the radial pulse, get your finesse just right with the pressure that you're using for it. Remember, if you're counting for 30 seconds, multiply it by two to get beats per minute. Um, and then make sure that if you can't feel it, some troubleshooting methods to check and push a little bit more firmly, push a little bit more light, because everybody has different layers of adipose tissue um, or maybe even scar tissue or something else that uh, could be altering the pressure you need to use to feel that pulsation. So remember that heart rate, the normal heart rate for a patient is 60 to 100 beats per minute. So anywhere in there is considered a normal heart rate for an adult patient.